Pinpoint pitching presents a bit of a learning curve to get the hang of to avoid throwing fastballs into the 10th row, but provides games with the most control of any pitching mechanic. So with this video, I'm going to go over how to master the three parts of pinpoint pitching as quickly as possible and the pros and cons of it in MLB The Show 22. So all right, let's get it. First off, you want to go and make sure you have pinpoint pitching enabled in your settings by going into your game plan settings, then over to pitching and then down the pitching interface and switching it to pinpoint pitching if it's not already set. And you're also gonna wanna make sure your pitch feedback is on. So the game will tell you how well you're performing each phase of the pinpoint pitching mechanic. For your pitching ball marker setting, Classic will display yellow arrows around the ball that shows you the break of the pitch and where it will end up relative to where you aim the ball at. So the ball is your starting point and if the pitch you selected has any type of break, so non four seamers, there will be a yellow arrow that will lead you to a bigger transparent circle. And this represents the area your pitch can land into. And different pitches by default will have bigger or smaller circles. So you will notice fastballs will always have the smaller circle around the ball because it's the easiest to control. And from there, the pitch's accuracy with each pitch will then further influence how big or small each circle is. So somebody like Greg Maddox, if you nail everything, you will have less doubt of where the ball is going, opposed to a more wild pitcher. And you can have the yellow arrow set so they will always remain even after you select a pitch or fade once you select a pitch to throw. And setting your ball marker to pitch trail will display for you the trajectory of the pitch out of the pitcher's hand. So what your opponent will see how the ball is coming toward them and where the pitch will end up without you knowing which direction it will break from to end there. If you like to nibble around the corner, do yourself a favor and make sure the transparent circle is covering more than half of the strike zone. So you don't walk every other hitter because you literally left it up to a 50-50 chance of it being a ball. As for the optimal camera view, it's completely up to you. Although I feel having the camera behind the pitcher, so any of the pitcher cameras, helps me nail the pitching motion required way more often than the other views. But again, this is completely up to you. Now when using pinpoint pitching with pitch feedback enabled, you will see three rows of numbers pop up one after the other on the side of the meter after you have thrown the ball, which gives you valuable information about how you did with nailing each part of that specific pitch. The top bar will tell you how well you traced your selected pitch's pitch motion with the right stick in the form of an accuracy percentage. Each pitch will have a different motion tied to it for you to execute. A fastball will have a rather easy down to back up motion, while the splitter is trying to give you arthritis. But no matter the motion, they will always end up with you back at the top to complete the first part of the pinpoint pitching mechanic. And a certain speed is required moving the right stick to have a high accuracy rating. So I suggest one, looking at the required speed example at least once before each pitch before you attempt it. And the game will tell you while you're doing it if you're going at the right speed. The line will turn yellow if you're going too fast or too slow, and you will lose accuracy because of this. Or it will turn green, which means you're doing it right, so all you have to do is maintain what you're doing. And if you're struggling getting the line green, you're probably going too fast and it's slower than you think. Trust me on that. Now, I also like that if your meter starts out yellow because you're going too slow or too fast, you can save the pitch by making the necessary adjustments mid windup which means you can equally mess up your accuracy at the last minute by speeding up or slowing down at the end, which does happen. So just because you start green doesn't mean you will end up green. The middle graphic tells you how well you timed slamming the white circle at the very top all the way down at the exact moment the closing blue circle wraps around the bottom one completely. So if you did it right, the right circle will land perfectly inside what would now appear to be one thin blue ring. You see, if I swing it down early, it doesn't close all the way. And if I don't swing it down at all, the closing circle will actually make the circle smaller. You want a time to swing down right when both bottom circles create one. And the location of the bottom circle is tied to wherever you're attempting to throw the pitch horizontally, with the circle being straight down, representing right down the middle of the plate. You see how the circle moves around as I change the pitch's location? And if you're early swinging the stick down, the pitch will rise. And if you're late, the pitch will drop. So again, the middle part will tell you how well you timed the swing downwards so that it will fit right inside the blue circle. 
Now the curveball is how quickly you're going to need to swing the right stick down after finishing the pitch's motion is tied to the pitcher's delivery. So not all fastball down up motions are created equal or sliders, curveballs, etc, etc. So guys with quicker motions, you're going to probably need to be ready to swing the right stick down as soon as you finish the pitch's required motion, while others will let you hang a bit at the top before you bring it down. Which is where the last part comes into play, which tells you by degrees and to the left or right how far away the circle you swung down from the top is to the closing circle. Now, depending on where you end up with it will determine how far to the left or right your pitch will end up being. So like I mentioned, you can swing down the right stick at the perfect time to match the closing circles connecting, but this gauges how well you landed inside it. And again, this alters your pitch horizontally depending on how far away your right circle ends up from the target. So all right, sports gamers, hope this video was able to help you guys out who have been considering using pinpoint pitching or have been using it and have been struggling a little bit. Remember, your accuracy of the pitch relies on three factors, how well you follow the pattern, how well you time when the circle closes, and how close you are to the actual circle when you bring the stick down. And if you're new and like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online if you haven't, so you don't miss anything we put out. And hit that bell icon at the bottom for more MLB The Show 22 content. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.